Hi there, welcome to my first watercolor video. I'm Arte Koopmans and today we're going to do a bit of an experiment. We're going to paint this old photo from around the year 1900. So for this demonstration I haven't just chosen an ordinary reference photo. This photo was taken in the year 1912 and since the author has passed away a long time ago, it's now in the public domain. Now I should mention that this photo is part of the Albert Kahn collection called the Archives of the Planet. And much of that archive is by now in public domain, but not all of it. So I've carefully chosen a photo by a photographer that has been dead long enough so that his work is now in the public domain so I can use it for my painting. It's an old autogram photo of a village in southern Germany and as you can see the colors in this photo are not that great. Everything looks kind of orangey but apart from the color I think this scene would make for a nice painting. So I'm just going to invent my own color scheme and try to make the painting look realistic. So let's start with the drawing. For the drawing I use a 2B pencil. You don't want a pencil that is too hard because the lines that it makes will be too strong and they will be hard to erase. And when the pencil is too soft you will smudge graphite all over the canvas. So. 2B is just fine. It is okay if there are some pencil lines visible in the final painting. Many painters like this. I try not to erase too much. If you do want to erase, then use a soft gum eraser. You have probably noticed this other tool that I've been using for the drawing. It's called a skill divider. So I'm using this skill divider as an extra help to scale up my reference photo so that I will have the correct size on the paper. It's all too easy to get the proportions of the drawing wrong and that can ruin a good painting from the outset. So by using this tool I make sure that the proportions of the major shapes are correct. And I'm using this skill divider together with a grid. Once I've laid out the major outlines, I can draw in the rest without too much extra help. As you can see, I started this drawing with the house. This will be the main subject of the painting. It is a nice archetypal house shape. It's more like a shed really, with most of the building being the pointed roof. In the middle distance there is some sort of larger farm building and on both sides of the painting there will be stacks of wooden logs. The house is the main eye catcher and below it are puddles of water reflecting the sky and the tree line. These puddles almost form a sort of small stream. This helps the composition as it leads the eye from the foreground of the painting towards the houses in the middle ground, which forms the center stage of our painting. There's also a nice bend in this stream of water, which slows down the eye. And to the left of this stream there's also a dirt road, which also has a nice bend to it. And this too leads the viewer into the painting, towards the buildings, and it also splits off to the right, to the other stack of wood. I make sure that any buildings in this drawing are drawn accurately. But I'm drawing things like trees very loosely. I don't want to put too much detail into the foliage. So the drawing is simply a guide for the painting so that I know where to put the paint. Okay, so with the drawing finished, now it's time to create the first wash of paint. In watercolor we work from light to dark, because it is a transparent medium. Any paint you add will only make things darker. So normally I will start with a wash for the sky. But this time I'm starting with the trees in the background and then I will paint the sky around it later. For this first wash I use this big mop brush 
to lay in the larger areas. This is an Escoda Ultimo brush. It's a nice big mop which can hold a lot of water and pigments in it. I've tilted my paper at an angle. This will help to create a bead when creating the first wash. The water will collect at the bottom of the wash because of the gravity which will help to keep the bottom edge of the wash wet. This way you can continue painting wet in wet from the top to the bottom of the wash. But I'm not going all the way to the bottom of the paper yet. I'm first painting the trees so I'm also working from left to right painting around the building. So I'm painting this on dry paper, so I'm painting wet on dry. This will give you uh, crisper edges. I want to give the impression of a clear and sunny day, so you will see more hard edges and more contrast between light and dark. So in this first wash I only paint the lightest colors that will be visible in the final painting. And later I will add the darker colors on top of it in subsequent washes. This way it's easier to preserve a sense of light in the painting and to have more control over the result. So for the trees that I'm painting now I am using a mixture of ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow. And you can create a lot of different shades of green by just mixing these two colors together. You can also get nice greens by using cobalt turquoise and yellow ochre, but I don't have these on my palette at the moment. So I'm simply using a yellow and a blue. For the more distant trees I use a bit more blue to create some atmospheric effect. This will make the trees look as if they are further away. So now I'm painting carefully around the trunk of the tree. It's okay too to, uh, to just paint over the tree trunk. If the tree trunk is going to be very dark then you can easily paint over it with a darker value. But I'm deciding to spare out the tree trunk so I have more control over what colors I will give it. The foliage further to the bottom will be a bit closer to the viewer so I use more yellow to make it look like the sun is shining directly onto it. I tried to make the foliage more interesting by not making an even wash of the same color but by varying the colors in the same wash. So I do this by alternating the amount of water and pigment and by varying the ratio between warm and cool colors. And I also drop in a bit of Indian yellow in this wash to create some extra variation. On the right side of the painting I make this one tree stand out by making it more yellow, as if autumn is just around the corner. So the trees are almost done. I'm leaving some highlights on the right of the shed. Painting around the roof of the shed. And then we're almost done with the first wash. I went a little bit over the roof with my brush, but I really want to preserve that highlight on the roof where the sun is shining on it. So while the paint is still wet, you can easily correct that mistake by using a tissue and lifting it off. Now I'm speeding up the video a little bit. 
So next I start working on the wash for the ground. Again I'm keeping things rather light. So in the reference photo the ground and much of the rest of the photo is this weird orange color. But if you look very closely you can still see tiny specks of cooler colors which may actually be its true colors. In the bottom right of the photo the color is a lot grayer and more bluish. So I don't want to make this painting too gloomy. So I'll make the colors a bit warmer and sunnier in my painting. So watercolor doesn't really work that well with gloomy and dull colors. It's more suited for a bright day with not too much clouds, some direct sunlight. So for this ground wash I use a pale yellow brown mixture for the bottom of the building. Now I'm painting around the uh, puddles of mud and the uh, trunk of the tree and there's also these sort of rocks lying in front of the tree which you can also see in the photo. Here I'm filling in the puddle and I will paint the reflection in it later when this wash has dried. Now I'm starting the farmhouse in the background. First painting the walls and then the roof in a more reddish color. The reference photo isn't giving me much information but I simply invent colors that I think will look okay. And then there's also uh, that other building. It's just visible behind the shed. I left that out when I was painting the tree, so now I can fill that up. And there we have this stack of wooden logs on the right and the stones in front of the tree. I'm using a pale yellow brow mixture for the bottom of the building. I'm making the ground on the left side a little bit darker where it meets the trees and on the right as well. So it looks like there is some shadow coming from the trees. And with the mop brush I also fill in the shadow side of the barn house. Creating a bit of shadow under the roof of the building as well. I have painted around the tree trunk and now I am filling it in with a mixture of ultramarine and some burnt sienna. And some sepia brown can also be used for the dark areas or you can also use neutral tint to create a really dark value. And to make the silhouette of the tree more interesting, you can make gradients in the wash and make parts of it warmer and parts of it cooler. So when you look at nature, there are always a lot of gradients from light to dark and from warm to cool. So painting these gradients will not only increase realism, but everything will look a lot less flat as well. 
You can also paint the wash in one color first and while it is still wet you can simply drop other colors into it. But be careful not to use too much water when you drop in extra colors. Now it's time to complete this first wash by also adding the sky. I use a separate mop brush to moisten the bottom of the sky first, where the sky meets the top of the trees. This way I avoid the sky overlapping with the trees. I want to keep it fairly simple and keep the sky mixture quite thin for now. You can always add some extra layer to the sky later if you feel like it. By now the first wash has completely dried. We now want to add the second layer on top of the first wash, but with some darker mid-tones. So in the second wash I also want to paint more detailed shapes. It's important when doing this to leave enough of the first wash to shine through as highlights. Because the light comes from above, I want to leave highlights in the trees in the top. As you may have noticed, I have switched to a smaller brush. I want to create the finer texture of the foliage, so I need a smaller brush for this to suggest the finer details. And the hairs on this brush are still long enough to hold a lot of water into it, so it's still suitable for covering larger shapes. I also want to create the suggestion of multiple layers of trees, so... I want these different layers to be separated by highlights, so I need to paint around them by painting the midtones and some of the shadows. And then keeping some of the previous wash exposed. Again, we don't want a boring, even wash, so I vary the amount of water and pigment. I also vary the amount of yellow and blue in the mixture. It's important to connect the midtones and shadows into larger connecting shapes. You have to connect these different shapes while the paint is still wet. If you don't do this, you will get lots of hard edges that either overlap each other or there are lots of gaps between them, which is distracting for the viewer, makes it look more busy and noisy. I've also, well, painting the trees in the background, connected it with the shadow underneath the house. And I did this while the paint was still wet. So this creates a smoother transition. Here I'm using a shadow mixture to do some negative painting as it's called. So I'm painting around the leaves of the tree. This way I can suggest the shapes of the leaves by leaving out the, the highlights. And while I am creating these sharper edges, I am also blending with water so you get these lost and found edges. So now I'm going to the left side of the painting and paint the foliage of the trees there. Using some water again to blend the edges a bit. This gives it a little bit more atmosphere and it will look like this glow from the sun. And it will push back these trees further into the background to contrast with the, the parts in the foreground of the painting. And while the paint is still wet, I'm Dropping in a slightly darker mixture to create some shadows. And I have left this tree-like shape 
in the bottom left by using negative painting so it will look like there is this other tree standing in front of it and now I'm filling that one in too with the midtones and with some darker shadows to make it more three dimensional you can still see I have left the highlights between these two layers of trees which separates them from each other so now I'm going to the main tree in the foreground and painting some of the shapes of the leaves in the crown of the tree I'm giving these a nice warm color because the light of the sun is shining through the leaves and I'm sort of creating these calligraphic strokes with my brush now adding some darker leaves still keeping them quite warm in color a few extra leaves in the top creating these nice leaf shapes so now I'm speeding up the process a little more it's basically the same as what I did on the left side of the painting just filling this larger area wet into wet as you can see I'm alternating lighter and darker values and I'm still suggesting some details, some, some branches of plants by preserving a few of the highlights now adding a few really strong dark values to create this sense of uh, a thick dark forest and I'm making the the barn stand out more by adding some shadow behind it making the roof of the building next to it a little bit darker adding some sort of tree And then I'm working from top to bottom down towards the ground and I don't want this hard transition so I'm continuing the, the shadow of the trees into the shadow of the ground by making a smooth blend now still with the same brush I am adding some texture to the roof You can see that I'm holding my brush in a sort of death grip, but that's what I do when I get really into the details. A bit too much texture, so I'm going to erase some of it with a tissue. Now I'm darkening the shadow side of the barn house. I'm using a lot of ultramarine blue to make it cooler. Now is also an opportunity to use this darker mixture to suggest some detail and suggest the texture of wood. Under the edges of the roof I paint the occlusion shadow which is the darkest 
And for this I use a mixture with more pigment and less water. And I can then mix this into the existing wash without losing the darker values. Because the paint is of a thicker consistency than the rest of the wash. Now I'm going over the edges of the roof again to make it a bit more dark. And a bit of shadow between the roof and the base of the building. And now some detail in the bottom of the house to suggest a plastered wall. And I'm also painting in the larger building in the background. I'm still not yet painting every minor detail. I'm saving some of the smaller details for the very last. Painting some of the details on the left. Yeah. You can see the barn house extending to the left as well. A bit of shadow. And the barn house in the background needs to be a little bit darker to make it half covered in the shadows of the trees. Some shadow where the building meets the ground. Same for the barn house in the middle. And some more shadow on the left side and I also want to suggest some texture from fallen leaves perhaps and some unevenness in the terrain. There are these sort of small hills where the ground meets the base of the trees. I've added a bit of extra shadow on the right side of the barn as well. And now I paint in this darker tree trunk here on the left. Adding some shadow to the stone in the foreground. And I'm suggesting a smaller stone on top of the larger one. I'm keeping these the same colors as I is for the ground because I don't want them to stand out too much. And I'm keeping the middle part of the stone a bit lighter. This suggests a bit of bounce light bouncing off of the ground onto the shadow of the stone. And there are some more stones further back as well near the barn building creating nice value contrast here and some really dark shadows underneath the stones where the light can't reach and now the Stones in the foreground have dried, so I'm going over them again with some darker values. Because otherwise they are too light in comparison with the stones further in the background, or the mid-ground really. So what I'm doing now, the ground looks a bit flat. That's because it doesn't really have much detail yet, so I'm suggesting some texture here by creating some random lines with my brush. A bit of extra shadow underneath the stones. So far for the ground I have used mixtures of ultramarine and burnt sienna, so I can control 
how red or blue I want things to be and I also add a touch of yellow ochre so there you have the three primaries you have red yellow and blue so because of the reference photo that I use I have to make up many of these colors myself so I'm keeping it fairly simple this way I can also mix the colors on the paper instead of on the palette and so I can see what looks good and if I don't like it I can still change it while it's wet some extra dark in the foreground and a bit of extra texture And now some nice darks to create these stones that are lying near these puddles of water. Oh, and there's some light coming in from the window. That's what you get when your studio is facing south. And now I'm painting in these puddles of mud so I noticed that blue or green in these puddles uh, from the reflections of the trees it would distract too much from the rest of the painting because it would contrast really strongly with the brown of the soil and that is why it's useful to make a color sketch first before you begin your painting so I decided to make the water in these puddles a muddy color and I'm using the same pigments as for the soil and as for the rocks. I'm leaving some of the highlights in the water where it reflects the sky and of course the water also reflects the tops of the tree line but it is filtered through this color of mud. A little bit of light falling onto the paper again, but luckily not in the part that I'm painting. So now I'm painting in the trunk of the main tree with a really dark mixture. You always have to paint a little bit darker than you would think because watercolor will always dry up lighter. And the trick to get these really dark colors is to get a lot of pigment on your brush. But also enough water, otherwise it won't move. So this is the second wash for the tree. And I'm making the top part a bit darker to suggest some shadow from the foliage. At this stage I feel like putting in some finer details now and for this I use a different brush this is an Escoda Perla which is a nylon round brush it's a, a smaller synthetic brush and these synthetic brushes are good for grabbing a lot of strong pigment but they hold less water so this makes them suitable for the finer details but not for large washes. So I'm creating this wood texture, giving the illusion of wooden planks with the shadow visible between them and some shadow underneath as well. And the barn house in the background is a little bit too light. So with the same brush I am putting in some darker values. Creating a sort of texture in the roof. With a dark red. Keeping the colors fairly warm.
and then there's this little green bush in front of the barm house with a slightly bigger brush I'm painting that one in as well some extra shadow underneath the trees on the left side this is the this is part of the barn complex with the, the roof and there's also a pile of wooden logs lying in front of it and with the, the small Perla brush I pinned in a, wi a window some of the tree trunks a bit more shadow in the trees some extra bit of texture to suggest these sort of small hills and with the Perla brush I am painting some doors and windows in the farm building and now some details on the base of the barn house as well some suggestion of doors and some small windows and when painting these these doors I don't paint them in just one color um, in these details too I try to keep some sort of gradient from light to dark and the little windows and the farmhouse in the background some extra darks in the stones and with this small mop brush I am glazing a bit over the the wood in the in the roof because I felt it was a bit too blue so I make it a little bit warmer making this tree a little bit darker And now painting some of these tree branches in the top left and where these branches meet the foliage some extra darks and if I would let it dry now as it is these edges would be very hard so what I do is once I've painted them I grab some more water on my brush and then I just fade those edges and soften them and with the small synthetic brush again I paint in some of these wooden poles you can see them in the reference photo And of course these vertical poles, they also need a reflection in the water. Darkening the water a bit as well. At this point the painting is getting more depth by adding these extra layers of darker values. And there's the reflection of the pole. I want to make it a bit softer than the pole itself. You do that by painting it into a damp layer of paint, which is not completely dry yet. But if the paint is too wet, then your reflection will disappear. So it's all about timing. Some extra darks here. Adding some occlusion shadow underneath the rock to make it stand out from the ground. Painting in an extra pole. At this stage the, the basic painting is 
largely done so this is the phase where we add all these tiny little details some shadows coming from the pools and then at the banks of these puddles of mud we want some extra shadow as well to, to better define uh, the edges so what I'm doing here is I'm painting this really dark edge first and while it is wet I grab some lighter paint and then paint it around it so you get this nice gradual transition so by placing it right next to it the darker paint slowly flows into the lighter mixture and here some extra texture on the ground because the ground still needs a lot more texture so in the reference photo you can see these sort of tracks perhaps they are cart rods where the wheels of wooden carts uh, have left their tracks in the wet mud so with making these nice quick strokes I suggest some direction in the road so now there is this direction going from the bottom left going in this bend towards the farm building in the background leading the eye past the barn house in the middle towards the one in the back so now I'm darkening the building on the right make the nice mix of blue and red and then we have these wooden logs on the right side of the painting so I'm now painting the base again with these three sort of primaries ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre and here I'm painting the details of of all these wooden logs and normally you want to paint from light to dark but this time I start with the dark details and then I will softly glaze over that with a darker color to make it look like it's half in the shadow and there's some dark holes underneath maybe for extra storage space and now to finish the painting off with some extra detail suggesting some more of the texture of the distant treetops and finally I want to decouple the foliage of the big tree from the trees in the background to make it stand out more so again I suggest the shapes of leaves with some negative painting by painting with dark around the lighter areas but now this tree really is coming apart from the background so I think the painting is finished Time to take off the wrappings. So there it is, the final painting. So considering the very difficult reference photo, I think it turned out pretty well. Especially when it comes to the color, I've, I have improved a bit on the photo. So if I will paint this again, would I do things differently? Yeah, I think so. Um, maybe some more shadow, some drop shadow on the ground. I've 
kept a lot of light in this painting compared to the photo to make it uh, a bit more contrasting. But I also like the, the dark and gloomy atmosphere in the original photo, so maybe I would have kept a little bit more of that in the painting. Perhaps a bit more detail in the trees. But with this photo it could easily turn into a big disaster, so I, I would consider this a successful experiment. So I hope you liked to see my painting process and you liked how the painting turned out. And perhaps in a future video I can try to improve the camera angle a bit. And if you have any suggestions in how I can make future videos better, please let me know in the comments. And if you like to see the paintings that I make, you can also visit my Instagram page at arthur.koopmans.art. You can find the link in the description and follow me there. You can even buy a painting there if you want to. And you can also check out my online shop in the description below. So if you like this video, please give me a like. If you want to see me create more watercolor videos, then subscribe to my channel. And we'll see you at the next time. Bye bye.